be the friend of God. And everyone has to learn to walk with Him by faith and be obedient to His plan. And then you know what that means? That really means to be able to take and win or to pass the test. And we see here that Abraham's first major test was that there was a famine in the land. Imagine what it must have been like for Abraham. You know, I've come all this way out here for this. I thought this was a land of blessing. I thought this was going to be the land of milk and honey. The famine here constitutes a new experience for Abraham. He never faced a famine before. He, he used to grew, he grew up in this city where, where things were there and provided and, and taken care of. He had a network of people. He had resources. Now he's come out all this way across this burning desert, and now he's facing the danger of being totally wiped out in the midst of a land that God somehow promised. Many of us tend to act quickly under that kind of pressure. The kind of pressure that Abraham was under. And run when we all pray. And Abraham, he takes quick action. He runs down to Egypt, it says in verse number 10. Nowhere in this do we see him consulting God. Nowhere in this do we see him praying or seeking God who had brought him out. He made a decision. I'm leaving. I'm going down to where things are going to be provided for me. And he goes to Egypt. Now, going to Egypt isn't necessarily wrong. I mean, it's a logical step. It's a geographical area where, where there would be provisions. If there's an economic base there in which we could survive. And on other occasions, Egypt becomes a place of survival and a place of refuge. If you remember in the life of our Lord, there was a time in which in a dream, the angel says, take the child, Jesus, and get up and go to Egypt. The problem wasn't going to Egypt. Rather, the central issue here is Abraham taking action without consulting God. Test number one, there's a famine. Do you pass or do you fail? <clears throat> do you pass or do you fail? At that particular point in your life, when the famine comes into your life, into your land, do you pass or do you fail? By passing, you consult God. You make that time before you make a decision. When you think that you have to make the decision right this second, you stop, you stop, you stop, and you consult God. If Abraham had looked to the Lord, it's possible that God would have sent him to Egypt anyway. But it's equally possible that God had another plan. We'll never know. Abraham acted without asking. I, do you understand that philosophy in life? Man, I'm a lot like that. You know, you, you stand there like the old gunfighters in the, in the old western days, and you're standing out in the middle of the street, and the enemy's standing in front of you, and, and you look, what do you do? Do you wait for him to draw first? Maybe you're like me. You, you, know, you, you, you draw and shoot and then aim. You remember the movie that uh, uh, Back to the Future, where he stands out there and he shoots and he hits way up in the air and it, it makes something fall. And, you know, maybe that's the way you are in your own life. How do you handle those kind of pressures? God wants to meet our needs. In a Baptist church, we probably vote on it. God wants to meet our needs in the midst of the famine. God wants to meet our needs. And there's no limit in which God can do. None. And I guess in the Baptist church where I grew up in, we vote on that one too. I mean, God can pour water out of rocks. He can provide manna from heaven. He can allow barrels of meal to never run dry. He can furnish tax money in the mouths of fish. There is nothing that God can't do. 
name. Many of us run when we're supposed to stand. Many of us stand when we're supposed to run because we don't consult God. He didn't give God an opportunity even to display his power. He went down his American Express card and bought a ticket and got out of there. Unfortunately, many of us are just like Abraham. We know God. We call God our friend. We pray to him on occasion. We read from his word. We claim to follow his word. But then when the famine strikes, Rather than consulting, we think, well, hey, I can handle this one. And we run down to Egypt. In verse number 11 through verse number 13, while running to Egypt, while running to Egypt, it doesn't stop there. The decisions continue to go south. When you're in Oklahoma and you say the decisions continue to go south, that points to Texas, and we know that everything evil is in Texas. We know that, right? We've got, got that in our minds. Okay, ready? Here we go. I mean, yeah, things are continuing to go down. And we see this unwise strategy that Abraham came up with. He hadn't even gotten to Egypt before he runs into problems. He looks over at Sarah, and he goes, whoa! Wow! And you got this 65 year old woman that is a knockout. <laughs> I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious from Scripture that because Sarah was, was a beauty, a, a desirable woman, even at age 65 years old, that Abraham feared that she was going to present a dangerous situation. And his fears were not without reason, and his motives, though, seemed to be to save his own self rather than any regard to Sarah whatsoever. This is the friend of God. This is the mighty man of faith. Remember that. In the midst of the famine, in the midst of the struggle, in the midst of the pressure cooker, you'll make some of the stupidest decisions in your life. Believe me, I'm in there. And you'll come up with the weirdest schemes that men have ever devised in the pressure group. Abraham's plan was to pass her off as his sister, which is sort of a half-truth, since Sarah was his half-sister. But hey, we're supposed to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, right? Natural beauty, plus her attractive foreign features, made Sarah an easy target for the money-hungry men and who was working hard and hitting their brownie points from their king. And by verse number 15, Abraham's strong desire to save his own life caused him to be willing to give up his own wife. And when we look at the 20th century man who's often characterized by acts of deception and deceit and adultery, diversion and murder, it's not hard to misunderstand his actions. He's just like us, 100% human. If, it's like that word, but. It's this little word, if. If Abraham would allow God to prepare his way for him. If God would have, would have been a, consulted back in Canaan, and God would have said, yeah, go on down to Egypt, but you're going to run into this problem, and here's the way out of it, here's the strategy. All of a sudden, God would have been the very center of the universe, 